This is John Strange with Select Film News. Can you give me your name and which film you're, you're sponsoring today? Sure. Uh, I'm David Bryant. I'm the executive producer of The Liberators. Awesome. Can you tell me a little bit about the film? Yeah, The Liberators is a documentary uh, that uh, discusses the theft at the end of World War II of thousand-year-old priceless cultural treasures from a, a cave near Quedlinburg, Germany. And the ultimate uh, detective story of finding who stole those treasures and attempting to recover those treasures for their rightful owners. How long did this film take to make? Uh, the film itself took uh, probably 18 months to make, but the director and producer Cassie Hay had been wanting to make it and working toward making it uh, since she was in college. Actually, it's uh, based on events that occurred in her, her hometown uh, before she uh, went to film school and launched her career in New York City. Awesome. Okay, uh, can you tell me a little bit about the, the filmmakers then and, and, and how they went about doing their uh, preparing for this film? Uh, the, this uh, film was uh, involved uh, extensive uh, work in Germany, uh, in New York, in Washington, and in uh, towns in North Texas, White Wright, Texas, and Denison, Texas. Filmmaker uh, Cassie Hay is from Austin. Awesome. Okay. Um, can you tell me a little bit about, you know, the, the, some, a little more about some of the artifacts they, that they were looking for? Certainly. These uh, artifacts originally were accumulated by the first king of Germany in 8 and 900 AD. So, uh, at his death, the artifacts that existed at that time were placed in an abbey that was uh, created by his widow and remained there for over a thousand years with additional artifacts being added over the centuries. Uh, in 1938, Heinrich Himmler uh, desecrated the abbey and church, uh, forbade uh, religious services there, and uh, seized these treasures, turning the church into a Nazi SS ceremonial center. And they were there during the uh, period of World War II until uh, an American soldier in the last weeks of the war uh, removed them and mailed them back to White Wright, Texas. Dev Shapiro here with Seelig Film News. So how did the release of like Monuments Men and the other projects that are focused on the theft of you know artwork in World War II, how, how did that affect you? Did it give you more steam and more um, funding to be able to do this documentary with? You know, Monuments Men and other projects that have been very prevalent over the last couple of years? Uh, I don't think that uh, they affected the funding, but I think it has piqued interest broadly uh, in the subject of uh, the loss of art and cultural artifacts uh, during war and the proper disposition and ultimate return of those artifacts. One of the points that the film makes is that those views have changed dramatically uh, over the last 75 years. At the end of World War II, the American government was the first government uh, that took the view that uh, just because you win a war to the victor does not belong all, all the spoils. Instead, the American government, for the first time, adopted the policy of returning uh, stolen or uh, misappropriated cultural treasures and art. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that that policy was always followed by American soldiers and uh, this film uh, illustrates what did happen in many instances, although this is perhaps uh, the most valuable cultural masterpieces that uh, were uh, misappropriated uh, by Americans in World War II and they were not recovered for over 45 years. 
so what what is some of the things that really shocked you when you got into this project and got into the meat of this what, what really shocked you that made you say at the end of the day whoa I didn't know this and you know this really shocked me well one of the things that I had uh, assumed was that at least part of the uh, the motivation for the theft of these masterpieces was uh, profit but in fact the co the motivations of the soldier who took these items were very complex and uh, as far as we know he never made any attempt whatsoever to gain financially from the theft of these items. However, after he passed, his, uh, his family members who inherited them had a different motivation and they did in fact sell some of the pieces. So, you know, in, in doing the film and all the research, what type of archives did you have to go into or, you know, did you get any special help from like the Smithsonian or the, you know, the Department of Defense back then, which was the War Department? Tell us, tell us some of the co cooperation with the different uh, archives and different departments that you guys received. The, the film centers on um, a fellow named Willie Corta, who is a, a German art detective who search the National Archives, search the military records, uh, and explored the art world to try to find out what had occurred, and uh, ultimately he and a New York Times reporter together were able to bring to light the truth about these events. In our work, uh, Cassie Hay, the director, uh, did extensive work in Berlin, in Quedlinburg, Germany, where the treasures have, have gone home for the most part, as well as uh, in New York's art world and in uh, Washington, D.C. You know, people are going to watch this documentary in the festival circuit and then hopefully in video on demand and hopefully a limited theatrical release. What, what are your hopes people leave the movie theater? What are your hopes that they're thinking about? What type of action? Because, you know, we have a lot of people who served during World War II are now passing away. And their, you know, property and their means are now being passed down to family members. And what if someone does find an artifact that might have been stolen? What are your hopes? Do you hope that this will inspire somebody to come forward and say, hey, we may have, you know, a questionable piece? And Absolutely. What, what are your hopes for this? Absolutely. Uh, uh, one of the people who appears in the film is Robert Edsel, president of the Monuments Men Foundation. And he does an excellent job of... Uh, leading a group that has brought back and will continue to bring back so many cultural treasures that uh, that have strayed over the over the decades and uh, I would hope that any family members who come into possession uh, of, of something that uh, uh, may have been brought back from World War II but has uh, serious cultural value to make the Monuments Men Foundation aware of it and uh, do the right thing to make those available to civilization, to our culture, to all of us who have a stake in those masterpieces. You're using the term cultural treasures. You know, a lot of people have used the term art. So besides paintings and statues, what are the cult other cultural um, items or artifacts that have gone missing? Yeah, these, these items either have tremendous value or are priceless but they're not conventional art pieces. It's not paintings. For example, one of the items is an illuminated manuscript written in gold by a Latin scribe in 842 AD. Now it is a beautiful, beautiful object, but its primary significance is cultural rather than simply as something beautiful to, to look at. So there are were many items that uh, uh, fit that general description. Beautiful, but their fundamental significance is cultural and historic. And not necessarily Jewish, because you know I've researched into this topic, and you know when people think of cultural artifacts or treasures that have been stolen, they think of the menorahs and the paintings that yes. were stolen out of Jewish homes by the Nazis. But we're talking about stuff that was hanging up in museums and. Catholic churches and cathedrals that were also too. So it's just not only Jewish artifacts. Uh, absolutely not, although there were 
course, an immense amount of theft from synagogues and from, from Jews in their homes. These have nothing in particular to do with Judaism. These were accumulated by the first king of Germany uh, in 912 uh, AD and preserved in what was first a Catholic church and then a Lutheran church for over a thousand years until the Nazis seized them in 1938. So you're screening here at the Dallas International Film Festival, the 10th year of this film festival. I think this film is perfect for it. So after DIFF, after you leave Dallas, what are your hopes for this film? Video on demand, theatrical release, I hope Blu-ray? Well, uh, we're actually in, in very active discussions to find out what the future of the film will be. Well, we do want to make it available to as broad an audience uh, as possible, and uh, there's quite a bit of interest in it. I think the audience will find that in addition to being a meaningful uh, film with a message, it's quite an entertaining uh, film as well. And so I think that a lot of people will want to see it. I hope we'll be able to bring it to to uh, everyone who is interested. When are you screening here at the festival? Uh, we're screening at 7 p.m. on Friday, April 22nd, and at 5 p.m. on Saturday, April 23rd. One thing, you know, one message, what one message is you want to get out to the audiences? After they've seen the film, enjoyed it, walked away, went home, what, what do you want them to linger with? What is the message that you want them to stick with? I think that they should think about the various uh, aspects of the, the issue of uh, cultural treasures and of theft of objects in the, in the uh, course of the conflict, because that's a very active and topical uh, matter today in Syria, Iraq, and other areas where uh, priceless cultural treasures are being destroyed and are and will be in jeopardy. Uh, and how we can best preserve those for the future and for uh, enjoyment and appreciation by all of us is well worth considering. So while this story takes place during World War II, it's not a World War II story. It's about what's happening right now in the world today and what can happen in the future. Yes, and in fact, it, you know, this, the story spans from uh, the World War II era well up into uh, the last few years when these were finally recovered and in fact uh, at least two of these objects have never been recovered and may be within 50 miles of us as we speak but yes these this these issues have importance today and for as far as we can see into the future uh, because conflict and the destruction of antiquities continues, unfortunately, uh, uh, every day. So how did, so the last question here is, why did you get involved in this project? Are you an art collector or, or yourself? How did, why did this touch you so much that I got to get involved in this? I uh, got involved in it uh, because uh, Cassie Hay, the filmmaker, is from one of the, the key towns as am I, and uh, that were involved in this film. So she uh, heard about it as she was growing up in Denison, Texas. This is a hometown picture that she always wanted to make. She went off to New York, uh, went to NYU Film School, worked in the television and film industry, but she always wanted to make that film. and. Uh, I, I greatly enjoyed the opportunity to work with her and help that finally come to fruition uh, in The Liberators. You know, I guess this is a funny anecdote for our viewers here. I'm a history buff as well. And you say Denison, Texas. Most people don't realize that Lake Texoma was built by Nazi prisoners back in the day. And so this is kind of an irony that, you know, some of the artwork has ended up in that area. It is. And, of course, uh, another irony is that Denison is the birthplace of General Eisenhower, who, exactly. uh, for the first time at the end of World War II, formulated the policy that, unlike victors in all previous wars, the United States would not have the policy that, to the victors, belong the spoils. So we didn't cart off all of the great art in the, in the uh, cities that we liberated 
and put it in museums in New York and Washington as victorious uh, countries had done in, in previous history. Last question, what's the website and Facebook page for the film so our viewers can learn more about your project and hopefully find some of these artifacts yes. hanging up in their living room? <laughs> the, uh, the website is uh, www.theliberatorsmovienospaces.com and uh, the Facebook page is also The Liberators Movie. Thank you very much for sharing your story and sharing your experiences and talking with us today. Thank you, I enjoyed it.